<laughs> Welcome to Moriel TV. My name is Joshua, live with James Jacob Prash, October 9th, 2018, for This Week in Prophecy. Jacob. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. Welcome to This Week in Prophecy. You know our purpose in bringing you This Week in Prophecy is not simply to highlight unfolding global events as we see them in line with biblical prophecy pointing to the return of Jesus, but also to engage believers in prayer. When Daniel saw these visions, it drove him to earnest prayer. If we are only taking in information from This Week in Prophecy or from John Hallow's Prophecy Update or other such websites, and it's not driving us to prayer, we're missing the purpose. We need to engage in prayer. There is a spiritual conflict in the heavenlies. Now, we know what the outcome is going to be, but the fact that the outcome is prophesied does not mean we do not have a role to play in it through our prayers. We certainly do. Let's begin looking at this week in prophecy. The events of the Kavanaugh hearings and the aftermath have so clouded the media environment that inadequate attention has been paid to events unfolding elsewhere, including the Middle East and also in Great Britain, where the conflict between the Europhiles and the Eurosceptics, that is the people who voted to leave Europe and the people who wanted to remain, such as British Prime Minister Theresa May, is becoming more and more pointed and something that's causing a schism within the Conservative Party beyond the schism that was already there. We do continue to ask you to pray for Great Britain and to pray that the democratic will of the people as expressed to get out of this monstrosity that Daniel predicted, will they make the iron stick to the clay in futility, will take place and God will show Great Britain mercy. Please pray that Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party never come to power. He is an opponent of Israel and he's no friend of Christians. He's given place to anti-Semitism within his party. He's given place to anti-Zionist activism. He's nobody we want in number 10 Downing Street. We need to pray in earnest against what he represents. And we need to pray for the Conservative Party in Great Britain that is presently in power to find a better leadership that's in accordance with the democratic will of the people as expressed. Now, I'm not trying to campaign along party lines, vote Tory, vote Labour. I'm simply saying, pray that Jeremy Corbyn does not get in. And please pray that we get a pro-Brexit prime minister or leadership in number 10 Downing Street. This is becoming almost absurd political theater in Britain to the point of it being a virtual cartoon, a satire, something needs to take place and take place soon. These events on a global scale, however, have again been underreported due to what's taking place in part in the United States. Now in the aftermath of the Kavanaugh confirmation by the Senate, Mr. Kavanaugh was sworn in and even now already his opponents, the pro-abortion camp of the Democratic Party, are talking about impeaching him with no grounds for doing it, suggesting he committed perjury in his confirmation hearings, again, with absolutely no proof it happened. These are the politics of desperation. They want to replace democratic process by spitting and yelling and misuse of the legal system to undermine congressional democracy, electoral politics, replacing it with corrupt judges legislating from the bench. They don't believe in the separation of powers. They don't believe in the Constitution. When they can't pass legislation, they want the courts to do it without any reference to the democratic will of the people or the elected representatives of the people. This is how they got Obamacare. This is how they got a lot of things, prayer out of schools. This is how they got Roe versus Wade. This is how they got same-sex marriage. And they're fighting to keep that power. 
please pray for Mr. Trump and for Mr. Pence, whether you like them or not. They're standing for Israel and they're standing for life and they're sympathetic to the cause of evangelical Christians. We need to pray for them. Let's continue now looking at this week in prophecy. This week in prophecy, we move on to Israel and the Middle East. Quite a situation where the court system is used for political purposes. A rather spurious prosecution is taking place now with a trial of Sarah Netanyahu, the wife of the prime minister. The claim is that she embezzled the Israeli government of $75,000 used for gourmet meals prepared by celebrity chefs from Jerusalem, I suppose from the top restaurants and hotels. Now you understand the number 10 Downing Street or in the White House or in the Elysee Palace, it would be standard to have gourmet chefs on staff. There'd be no need to send out to have gourmet meals prepared. No need. Uh, it would be standard. The White House has a whole staff with the, with the master chefs. Um, somehow in Israel, this is not the case. Okay. Maybe there's more frugality. It's a smaller country with a smaller GNP, s smaller tax base. That is absolutely fine. But to bring a criminal prosecution for $75,000 it would be cheaper, cheaper to ask Mr. Netanyahu's wife to repay the $75,000. It's going to be very difficult to get a conviction over something like this. Every other head of government in every other democracy does the same thing, or they have a chief chef on staff in the official residence of the prime minister where he lives the president, as the case may be. This is a politically motivated prosecution of something petty. It could be settled without going to court. It was not an intentional act of theft or anything of this nature. There's always a gray line where what is legitimate expenses that we would attribute to the work, to the office, to the ministry, to the function of government, always a thin line between that and personal expense. This happens in corporations with executives. Um, at what point are they using company transport or the company credit card for personal expenses or company expenses? There are executives who go on business trips for the company, have a day off and play golf, but the company picked up the bill for that one day that they were in the hotel, but they played golf. But then playing golf, they were playing golf with clients. They were playing golf with people they were negotiating with. They were breaking the ice. They were doing business deals on the golf course. It's not always black and white in the corporate world. It's not always black and white with NGOs. And it's not always black and white in government. Such a prosecution is petty and politically motivated. If there is a problem, it could be settled without going to trial. Again, they're very selective in how they use the judiciary. Very selective. In the United States, why do we not see the same kind of uproar or anything remotely approaching it with Keith Ellis? second in command of the Democratic Party, charged by his former lady with criminal assault that we see with Brett Kavanaugh, or witness with Brett Kavanaugh. There are two standards. There are two standards in America. There are also two standards in Israel. Left-wing judges, left-wing prosecutors, etc. Some would argue the same was true of Ken Starr that it was a right-wing politically motivated prosecution of the Clintons. Except in the case of the Clintons, there was substantial evidence. Mr. Clinton, Bill Clinton, pled guilty to perjury, and he was disbarred for perjury after admitting he lied to the American people 
and he lied to the grand jury. He was actually disbarred. You cannot call the star prosecutions of Clinton's spurious or baseless. Nonetheless, this is what happens. The misuse of law and the judiciary for political purposes. We've again pointed out that Jesus said, you will be brought before magistrates and kings in one of the Gospels. Puts the courts first. An out of control court system that in itself is not behaving legally. We are seeing more and more and more of this. Democracy is being circumvented by it in many countries, including the United States. Certainly in Europe with the European Court, the European Criminal Court, and now the European Court of Justice trying to rule against the United States in favor of Iran. Again, a court decreeing something. Fortunately, the Trump administration has withdrawn any recognition of the authority of the International Court of Justice in this matter in The Hague in Holland. Um, these are just politically appointed jurists. It is all about politics, not about law and justice. Expect to see more of it before the Lord comes. But we are certainly seeing it this week in prophecy. Mr. Netanyahu has stated that Israel will never give up the Golan. He's saying this for a good reason. There may be as many as 65 to 70,000 Russian troops in Syria deployed close to the Golan. There are certainly thousands and thousands of Iranian guards armed in part by the Soviets in league with the Assad regime within 30 miles of the Israeli border. This week in prophecy, things continue. Going to the south, mobs continue to riot along the border of Israel and Gaza. And they have unleashed, once again, barrages of balloons carrying incendiary devices designed to set forest fires and to kill civilians. A major forest fire was burning and still is burning it had been out of control at the Shekedah Forest in Israel. Now, reforestation in Israel is an emblem of the national rebirth. The Turkish Muslims put a tax on trees. Arab nomads preferred the desert. Israel essentially reforested much of the land, and that is a picture of its returning to what it had been in biblical times. Not quite a land of milk and honey, but certainly a land where things grow. This is being attacked. There is a spiritual meaning that they're trying to burn down forests because forests are emblematic of the rebirth of the Jewish nation in accordance with biblical prophecy. So it continues. There has been a naval incursion, at least an attempted one, into Israeli maritime territory near the beach not far from Ashkelon and Ashdod at an area known as Zikim. Zikim. Now the Israeli Navy responded immediately, opening fire on the Palestinian naval vessels, killing a number of ha Hamas military seamen, sailors obviously. But this does show that now you have a war that is brewing and it is not only terrestrial and it is not only on the air now it is on the sea a precedent has been set at the same time there has been a build-up of both american and soviet naval forces off the shore of israel further to the north and off the coast of lebanon and syria particularly this altogether is beginning to become a very ugly situation. We do not want to become alarmist, but we do want to pray and urge others to pray. Let's continue understanding the main event strategically of this week. The Soviet chief of Russian Bureau of Politics and Military Affairs, Alexander 
Mikhenyov announced that the deployment of the Russian S-300 anti-aircraft missile systems will be fully operational in order to restrict Israeli air operations over Syria. This follows the downing of the II-20 Russian reconnaissance craft containing 19 Russian military personnel. Again, there may be 65,000 or more Russian military already in Syria, and if we count the mercenaries, we're not sure how many, but 75,000 would probably be the ceiling figure. Now, a number of these have been killed already in con armed conflict with the United States in eastern Syria on the Euphrates, perhaps 300. We've been reporting this, that the Russians have been losing people, losing aircraft, um, one down ironically by the Syrians, and putting themselves in harm's way. But with the deployment of the S-300, something else has happened. The Russians now say that the Israelis will be on their radar screen, not only, as we announced last week, when flying over Syria, but when flying over Israel. And that there has been a manning of the S-300s by Russian-trained Iranians. So now we will have Iranians operating S-300 weapon systems with Russian advisors with the specific purpose of controlling the airspace to down Israeli planes, including reconnaissance aircraft. This could lead, once again, to armed conflict directly between not only Israel and Iran, but Israel and Russia. The situation is becoming extremely, extremely tenuous and extremely complicated. The Netanyahu government announced this week in prophecy that it is going on a war footage, a preparation for war, anticipating more graduated conflict. This is not good. The Israelis, of course, are doing what they have to do, but the situation is being provoked by Iran and by Russia. We are moving into a very, very dangerous situation very rapidly. Once again, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Mr. Netanyahu and his government. Pray for the Trump administration, who appears to be on the precipice of losing one of its most able members, Nikki Haley, at the United Nations. We urgently need to pray for Mr. Pompeo and for General Mattis. We need to pray for the governments of the West, of Israel, and the United States, particularly in the face of these events. Now, something else is also happening this week in prophecy. There has been a crackdown by the Israelis against Palestinian radicals who assassinated two Israelis this past week in prophecy. Things are also intensifying on the West Bank. But at the same time, it is the Hamas government that is provoking conflict with Israel. But in response to the Hamas government, for their own reasons, without reference to Israel, the Palestinian Authority that controls the West Bank of Mr. Abbas has basically cut off the electricity supply to Gaza. The sufferings of the Gaza residents, Muslim Arabs, are being caused directly by the Palestinian Authority with these major blackouts, only a few hours of electricity a day. Now, of course, the media blames Israel for any hardship that takes place in Gaza, even when it's directly caused by Hamas itself or by the Palestinian Authority. Completely hypocritical and totally inaccurate in its representation or misrepresentation of the factual realities. But understand something else has happened this week in prophecy. The government of Qatar, Qatar from the Persian Gulf, has bought oil in Israel, and the Israelis are transporting the oil directly into Gaza without reference to the Palestinian Authority and without reference to the Hamas government. 
the Israelis are directly helping the people of Gaza to get electricity by allowing this oil paid for by Qatar to come into Gaza. Whether the Hamas government will continue to allow it or intercept the oil for its own purposes, we don't know. But we do know that Mr. Abbas is not happy. Mr. Abbas has punitively turned off the lights in Gaza, and the Israelis, in joint cooperation with the government of Qatar, are putting those lights back on. Quite a situation. And it's all happening this week in Prophecy. My name is James Jacob Prash, Morial Ministries. God bless and thank you so much for joining us. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. We know so many of those who visit us online, Roku TV, Vimeo, and YouTube, and who read our publications are interested in the subject of prophecy and the return of Jesus. Jesus who told us to be watchful, watch for these signs, that that day not overtake you like a thief. And being watchful is something we ascribe tremendous importance to. This year, the English Moriel Conference, not the northern one, but the main English one in the Midlands at Swanwick, England in Derbyshire, not far from Nottingham, not far from Sheffield, in the very middle of England, in the East Midlands. At Swanwick, we will have our annual conference as usual at the Hayes Christian Conference Center in Alfreton, Swanwick. Our guest this year will be Reverend John Peters, a saved evangelical conservative true Wesleyan Methodist clergyman who has stood up within the Methodist church for the truth of God's word, for scriptural morality, and for the purposes of God for Israel and the Jews. Reverend Peters will be joining John Haller and myself. Most of you are familiar with John Haller as the American attorney, trial lawyer, who operates Prophecy Update, a very broadly viewed weekly prophecy update in the United States that is watched globally. The conference will be the 16th to the 18th of November. John Peters, John Haller, and yours truly, Jacob Prash, looking at Israel, current prophecy, and you. Booking details are available on the Moriel website, moriel.org. It's also advertised in Be Alert. However, the number you can call if you're in the UK is 07894 862 590. Speaking to Beryl or Peter Hunter, who are our conference coordinators for the UK, 07894 862 590. Actually, there are our conference coordinators for England. They will be more than happy to get you accommodation and a place in the conference. Now, we do not have a lot of places left. It is booked rather quickly, and it's booking rather quickly. 07894-862-590, speaking to Beryl and Peter Hunter. The book of place, 16th to 18th of November, Alfreton, Swanwick, England. God bless. Hope we see you there.